So hello everyone, I'm Henny from Hungary. Sorry for not being there and sorry for the amateur video. You only uh, will see my slides and not see me, but I try my best to explain you my project. So my project was about part-time supported living in Monikenheide. The topic was given to us by Chris in Monikenheide, and uh, he, uh, he explained that it's, um, it's a question that uh, comes time to time to the table but they can't really find a solution uh, for it the main question is if it is possible to fill up rooms not in use so empty rooms uh, uh, time to time coming up or even regularly to share it with someone or to use it uh, for for a better purpose and uh, the two main reasons behind these questions are um, the need for optimizing the space and budget uh, better but also on the other side and not talking about profit and incomes and factory like working like optimizing space and budget um, so on the other side there's also giving the possibility to as many people as possible uh, to spend some time even uh, just one uh, day in Monique and Heide because there because there's this waiting list and there's this need um, um, with people for people with the intellectual Ability to some time spent in um, uh, Monique and Heide. So um, at the moment, Monique and Heide uh, offers uh, two uh, different kind of working. The first one is, of course, the long term living when uh, people rent a room and uh, get uh, and share uh, some other um, uh, spaces with other people and get uh, support and assistance in uh, living. But Monique and Heide also offers rooms for short term, um, for example summer camps or, or um, other events when people would spend just a few days or maybe uh, two weeks um, um, in one room but then they uh, turn back to their uh, home. And uh, raising the question of part-time uh, living um, really um, was similar to the um, to the phenomena of Airbnb um, outside of the Monique and Heide world and, and the, the um, trend of uh, shared uh, living. And I was uh, curious, and I, I found some similarities in um, uh, offering possibilities also in Monique and Heide between these two um, uh, models that they uh, have right now. So um, um, my by my research on Airbnb, I found a um, really uh, interesting and important transition from the original model of Airbnb to the um, recent model and what you can see about uh, the working of Airbnb today. The original model was totally um, um, motivated by the same reasons as Monique and Heide raised, like optimizing space that you own um, and giving it uh, to someone that would need it uh, in times when you're not at home or when you have an, op um, an empty room, you could uh, rent it for someone. So let's use your space more cleverly um, in, a, in an optimized way and, and make some money with it and both and offering to the travelers or the people in um, uh, need of a room um, um, a better price than a hotel can uh, offer. So this was the original idea but now uh, that um, uh, uh, what you can see when you are looking for an Airbnb room that um, you are um, offered um, a professional very hotel like uh, service it means that you won't uh, find uh, as many uh, real apartments, empty apartments, as you could see in the first uh, phases and, and, uh, and by the founding of, uh, of uh, Airbnb. Of course, there are still um, um, apartments rented in the, in the original um, uh, way and, and sense of uh, Airbnb, but today you can see much more like um, uh, empty, neutral, sterile apartments that maybe would, uh, uh, before their renovation, uh, after sorry after the renovation they were never uh, been used as real apartments so no one lived there for uh, long term but uh, uh, now they are only used for uh, Airbnb 
um, purposes. So they really function as hotels, just they are not in a hotel building, but in, in um, um, uh, private person's uh, apartments. But sometimes it's all, even not private person's apartments, but uh, companies uh, having some apartments and renting uh, them on uh, Airbnb. And in this transition, there's something very important that um, was uh, has disappeared, and this is privacy and intimacy. So, uh, so from this uh, system, you can see. So from this transition, we can see that uh, uh, people try to push out um, uh, the feeling of being in someone else's home, and and substitute it with a hotel-like and, and sterilized um, uh, environment, which we all know that is an illusion but still gives um, uh, the illusion of of, um, of not entering into someone's private uh, space and gives the illusion of more hygiene and uh, and more space for your uh, privacy maybe but um, in my research on, on Airbnb, I could see also other uh, important differences. Um, uh, if um, an Airbnb system was uh, used in Monique and Heide, we should uh, see that um, these differences, which are that the, the clients in Monique and Heide who rent the room are not the owners of their uh, room. So if uh, their room is given to someone else, then the compensatory value, uh, in case of Airbnb, it could be money. It is it is money, but in Monique and Heide, it could be also something else that uh, the clients would appreciate um, uh, and would be important for them. But for sure, uh, there would be. Uh, needed a compensatory value like this. So this would, in, in, in this system now, would go to, to Monique and Heide directly, so to a third party. And uh, people who le uh, let uh, use uh, used by their, their room um, for their sacrifice um, would need some, this, uh, some compensatory value, but not uh, it's not it's not easy to say how they could uh, get it. And the other uh, imp very important thing is that um, uh, Airbnb is always for short term, for uh, mostly for travelers. And uh, when you're traveling, you kind of agree with adventure and, um, and spontaneity and um, um, things that you can't see uh, in advance. So you're fine with that uh, adventure. Maybe you're even an adventure seeker. And you're totally in the mood of being outside of your home and you accept uh, all these inconveniences um, uh, that you can have in a, in a uh, stranger's home or in a stranger apartment. Stranger apartment and there are also some other differences which I don't think they are so much relevant uh, but let's talk about them shortly that um, the system of Airbnb is really um, going on and, and uh, working on the uh, on based on the system of evaluation so when you like a room you give a good evaluation about it and other people can see that they can trust this uh, renter uh, better and this goes um, uh, and this yeah, this goes on on the internet and on the site of uh, Airbnb. And Monique and Heidi clients are not really internet uh, users, um, and so this uh, kind of evaluation system or would need another uh, platform or uh, totally would uh, miss, which is um, um, which is maybe not that important in this case, but um, for the working of Airbnb, it's crucial. And, um, uh, and the other thing that uh, usually Airbnb business makers don't uh, meet regularly, uh, maybe even just one time in their uh, life, and in case of Monique and Heidi, I think this wouldn't be the case. People who would um, share their rooms um, would see each other more often, and this brings other uh, psychological um, consequences, let's say. Uh, so, from the um, research in Airbnb, I could already see that the uh, key problem is uh, privacy. 
and I'd like to and I try to uh, bring in another uh, methodology or let's uh, say like do a research on um, on another um, discipline which is uh, environmental psychology and I checked for what environmental uh, psychology says about um, uh, feeling at home and what makes your home your home and uh, how this is related to Altman uh, was an environmental psychologist and, and his um, uh, theories are really important in this um, uh, topic and uh, he says that uh, his definition of privacy is that privacy is not static but a selective control of access to the self or to one's group. So he says privacy um, uh, means uh, having control on the physical space and also on information and all the emotional aspects um, uh, of your uh, private uh, sphere, which means that you um, um, decide about allowing in information and people to your closeness uh, or deciding not to do that and um, you need um, uh, environment and tools for this and your home is really important in this uh, question in this uh, space and not, not just important but the most important um, uh, place where you can uh, uh, have this control and uh, have the feeling of this control and, and use it. And uh, Altman also um, um, def um, determines three territories. He says there are primary, uh, totally private territories, which are our home and um, uh, our bed and our very private uh, belongings. Uh, there, are, uh, and on the other side, and I uh, jump to the third uh, territory now, there are the very public territories where you understand that you have no control and everyone else can uh, use the same uh, place and uh, object in the way as you do too and in between the private and the the totally private and totally public uh, territories there are the private and public the secondary territories which uh, have uh, the features of both um, uh, territories and this is where things get um, um, shaky and risky and where, um, where things are not that um, um, obvious uh, for example when you like um, um, when you have in a library or a cafe your favorite place and you spend there a, a, a favorite seat or, or a favorite table let's say and you spend there a lot of uh, time uh, you start to feel that it's it's your own and it belongs to you somehow but of course for other people uh, this uh, control cannot be um, used or, or shown or determined or anything but you still get um, less or more anxious when a stranger uses your thing or your place uh, even if uh, rationally you know that you shouldn't be or something and uh, time is a very important um, uh, question here like uh, research has shown that people um, after sitting in a place after five minutes uh, can um, uh, give it and switch it with uh, someone else uh, easily but after sitting in a place uh, uh, 25 minutes uh, and someone comes in a public uh, place and um, and someone comes there and asks you or does something to to have your uh, seat you really feel that um, um, and, and even act like it, that would be your seat so uh, making some uh, something private from the public domain um, is um, really connected to time and what you can uh, see from Altman and other people's uh, uh, theories is that um, home is uh, is where you have this private place, uh, this uh, primary territory, and uh, where you can uh, um, handle and, and, and manage your uh, privacy and have this total control. Um, and home is where you have this control, so um, uh, already said. But another uh, other features of uh, home and important things um, uh, connected to home are security, uh, which comes from the control uh, of your control about this uh, space. Uh, that if you feel that you have total control, you feel secured and you can uh, relax and uh, not. Um, 
always pay attention to others and things going on uh, around you. So home is where you have security. And home is where you have continuity and you can have your routines. Home is where the things are always in the same thing and you can uh, use them in the same way and do uh, uh, every day and this, your same methods and this also gives you relaxation like you don't have to pay attention anymore to the details of, uh, of the object and um, um, this is also connected to control and, cont and uh, security but uh, this comes with home and the other uh, and another very important uh, thing is personification um, that you use uh, make your place uh, look and and uh, work as you look and want to see the uh, world so you make it um, um, on your face so make it like uh, you are and you communicate uh, through this uh, environmental modification through uh, to yourself and also to others so this is uh, mainly comes with decoration but it's not only decoration it's like um, setting up the environment as you like and uh, as it is comfortable for you and Yeah. So, um, so when you have uh, your home, you uh, it means that these um, things work properly uh, in your private uh, uh, space. And and um, yeah, and this uh, comes back to the time that I already said with the five and twenty five minutes of uh, using your seed that uh, these things um, um, can be created um, um, uh, by outside factors. But uh, if you spend a lot of time in one uh, place, it uh, also um, just. Uh, comes by themselves so they uh, they start the, the process goes on um, and and uh, starts to ev um, elevate uh, if you spend a lot of time somewhere uh, so um, it means that if you try to um, offer a service uh, offer a home as a service you have to provide this first territory which uh, Altman's and Brickle uh, researchers said that it's someone's bed and some private space with the private belongings so that's the most important and the, the, the most crucial for first uh, territory and um, uh, you have to give this control of access you have to give uh, not walls but but somehow close down the space and give boundaries and uh, control about opening these boundaries it's, that is usually doors and keys and things like that and it have to work uh, for the continuity so ha things have to be there uh, always uh, as you um, used to uh, have them where you used to have them and things and that's uh, and also personification but empirical researches of um, of uh, Altman say that uh, bathroom is not that important we we keep it as a secondary uh, we can accept it as a secondary territory which means that we um, are fine or good with uh, someone else is using that uh, space or uh, place and things but actually it is um, even better if it's private and uh, empirical research is also sh show that kitchen is a very important thing but I really think that in the uh, case of Monique and Heide kitchen is not that crucial as um, uh, in um, um, families and in uh, real life um, settings uh, or sorry for this um, real life um, um, terminology but like out like outside of uh, Monique and Heide but it, it I think it's really is and this is not that crucial because people in Monique and Heide, as I saw when I visited um, uh, some homes, they don't spend so much time in the kitchen that it could become a first uh, territory. But if some, if in uh, some houses, a uh, kitchen is really an important place and people spend there a lot of time, then it, it really becomes first a second territory and then a first uh, territory even. So these were my researches, and in the beginning of uh, my um, um, of my research, and the first week that we spent in Monique and Heide, we were really thinking about design solutions, like flipping beds and sharing the um, uh, space uh, cleverly and everything. But after doing my research and understanding how important is control and uh, boundaries around your private uh, space, uh, now I really only have uh, advices and not design solutions yet, or or maybe wouldn't even go in that direction. 
And my advice is that never save on privacy. So uh, let's avoid uh, shared rooms. Maybe make smaller rooms because if someone uh, is spending just two or three days a week in a room, won't need that uh, much space. So you can uh, sp uh, save some money on the, on the space, and you can share a bathroom because it's really a secondary territory. Let's say, and uh, you can um, if someone is not using um, a room um, or a home for for half of the week you can cut the budget on heating and cleaning um, and other things but please don't save money on privacy always uh, give the control and the, uh, the possibility of personification to the um, to the person that uses that um, uh, room uh, if you want uh, him or her to feel them home and secure and the other thing that don't mix first and secondary territories so uh, for the people that uh, already feel that the uh, room is their home uh, don't uh, convert the room into a hotel and uh, only if they um, uh, agree with it and and um, and give a compensatory value for it and for the people who would come to Monique and Heide only for a few days and um, um, or, or maybe just one night or one uh, uh, day. Um, don't uh, for them. Don't make uh, these spaces feel like home. And not even if they are like regular uh, visitors at Monique and Heide, because if they start, uh, if, because they spend uh, uh, more time in a place, then they start to feel their home and their first uh, territory, and then uh, they are just. Um, 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 will ask for other things that uh, would make their home. So, um, so if someone comes uh, to Monique and Heide like every um, month, once in a month, uh, maybe it's better. So, in, in this theory and understanding through uh, environmental psychology, it is much better to give another room um, uh, every time because then they don't start to. Um, feel at home and feel connected to the to the space um you can raise the question if uh, if the privacy and we also talked about it with uh, chris and uh, johan that they might have a different uh, uh, kind of um, perception about uh, privacy but um it, it 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 can be i don't know i never uh, tried it and uh, we would need some uh, empirical researches it and tests uh, on it but what i saw on um on um, researches that i found uh, which were about elder people and um uh, older people with dementia dementia and and uh, and without uh, and and some research is about children and how they need um, these um, private uh, spheres and, and how they control um, um, these spheres and how they um, uh, have this privacy um, they all uh, show the same so like also for older people there is the, the, uh, I found a research um, uh, from the US that they uh, the question was exactly like uh, is it good to sh for them to share rooms or better uh, pr uh, to provide them private rooms and it came out that it's much better to have private rooms even with people um, with dementia uh, that we would think that they maybe don't care or something like that and as an afterword, so these were my uh, uh, advices. Uh, I just uh, like to close it up with um, with a thought that when we talked about uh, Chris and Johan about this uh, question of part-time living in uh, Monikenheide, it came out uh, that they said that every time it comes uh, on the table at meetings, uh, people get anxious, uh, especially nurses and uh, other um, assistants uh, who who support the clients in uh, Monikenheide. And um, I just want to uh, say, like, yeah, that f at the beginning I thought that this anxiety may can be rationalized and, and we can find some solutions uh, not to have um, uh, this anxiety and, and um, um, come up with uh, uh, space organizing solutions that could uh, uh, go over it. Um, but uh, after my research, I think uh, they are kind of uh, right. 
And I had a <laughs> cognitive science and um, consumer behavior course in this uh, semester in uh, K Leuven, and both of the courses we had we talked a lot about decision making. And there's um, um, theory and and studies show in decision making that uh, experts and they tested on fire workers and nurses and policemen. Um, so these kind of experts in um, real life situations uh, usually um, uh, can trust not not usually but like most of the time like 95 percent of the time can trust their first uh, thoughts about um, uh, a complex problem and um, uh, even when they try to rationalize it afterwards they can't really um, explain um, why they had that first thought but i could really think back to this situation and as um, as we talked about it and as they uh, explained it to me i really think that uh, there's something going on that everyone feels uh, bad about sharing privacy of uh, of clients but it was hard to understand actually why and i also believed in um, that i could uh, rationalize it better so that was my um last message let's say uh thank you very much you can uh contact me in this uh email address i will be happy to have your uh comments thank you bye